Okay, in this video we're going to talk more about verifying trig identities. So, if you watched the first one, you heard me go through these, but um, these are the identities that you absolutely must know. There's eight of them, they're called the fundamental identities. You have three reciprocal, you have two ratio, and you have three Pythagorean identities. You really need to know those or you're kind of not going to be able to do any of the problems. Um, there's also a bunch of strategies that I like. In the first video, I read them all to you. In this one, I'm just going to point out that I'm going to work mostly on uh, trying to distribute and trying to factor um, because they're very common things that you do as you go through these problems. So let's uh, dive right into some problems. So the first one, we have sine cubed plus cosine cubed all over sine plus cosine is equal to 1 minus sine times cosine. So um, this might be from your Algebra 2 nightmares because now you're going to have to factor a sum of cubes. So hopefully you remember how to factor a sum of cubes. Um, we have a cubed plus b cubed is equal to, so it's going to be a plus b, and then a squared minus ab plus b squared. Okay, so that's a sum of cubes. You might also recall a difference of cubes is a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b, and then a squared plus ab plus b squared. Um, a, a way that a lot of people remember that is uh, they just remember uh, SOAP, which means, uh, so this tells you what to do with the signs that are in there. So if you look, uh, the sum of cubes is um, a plus b, so that's a plus, a squared minus ab, so that's a minus, and then plus b squared. And in a difference of cubes, the signs go minus and then plus plus. Um, and so what SOAP means is the same, so if it's a cubed plus b cubed, you're going to do the same sign, so it's a plus initially. Then the opposite, so it's a negative sign, and then always a plus at the end. Um, so a lot of people remember it that way. That's actually how I remember it. Um, so let's apply the sum of cubes to sine cubed plus cosine cubed. So we're going to get sine plus cosine. And then we're going to have, so parentheses, sine squared, and then minus sine times cosine, and then plus cosine squared. And then that's all over the denominator. And what's really nice is that the denominator canceled out, which if you look at the original, you kind of knew that had to happen because the right-hand side doesn't have a function in the denominator. It's just kind of denominator 1. So however the left-hand side factors, it must include um, sine x plus cosine x because that had to cancel somehow. Um, and it does. So let's cancel it. So equals. So I'm just going to rewrite this um, kind of for clarity. Because remember, when you're writing your solution, you want everyone to be able to understand it, not just like the super clever people. And uh, so I have sine squared plus cosine squared, which is good, because that's one of the Pythagorean identities. It's the most famous of them. Um, so that's 1. So I have 1 minus sine times cosine, which, if you look, is actually what we were supposed to prove this thing equal. So we're done. All right, so that's one way that factoring can just help you out right away. Um, so let's look at another one. So here we have sine squared over cosine squared plus 3 cosine plus 2 is equal to... 1 minus cosine over 2 plus cosine. So the left-hand side is way more complicated. You'll find if you're looking at a textbook, the left-hand side is almost always more complicated. Um, I don't really know why they do that, because all they'd have to do is switch the two sides, but I've also done it, so uh, I don't know. Um, so this is a video about factoring and how it can help. So if you look at the numerator, that's sine squared. That's actually um, something we can definitely factor. I actually require my students to memorize what that factors into, but um, what it comes from is... We have the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. You can rearrange that because that's an identity, so we actually know that that's true. It's been proved. Proven. We proved it. Um, so sine squared equals 1 minus cosine squared, and then 1 minus cosine squared factors into 1 plus cosine and 1 minus cosine. So that I call those Pythagorean conjugates. Because if you multiply 1 plus cosine, 1 minus cosine, it turns into sine. So it like changes the um, trig function you're working with, which is a really good technique to use. So I'm actually just going to replace sine squared with 1 plus cosine, 1 minus cosine. So 1 plus cosine, 1 minus cosine. If you don't have that memorized, you might include the step where you replace sine with 1 minus cosine squared, and then factor that in the next step, but I'm going to jump right to this. And then that's all over... I can actually factor the denominator. That's a kind of a it's a trinomial um, where cosine is kind of the variable. It's like u squared plus three u plus two. So I'm going to factor that into cosine plus one and cosine plus two because it kind of factors easily. 
So that's equal to, if you look, you have a 1 plus cosine over cosine plus 1. Those are obviously the same, so I can cancel those. So I have 1 minus cosine over, and I'm going to rewrite it so it looks exactly like the right-hand side, 2 plus cosine. And that is the original right-hand side. And so factoring got us through this one as well. So it's usually if you notice what technique to use, and it's not a particularly hard identity, you're going to solve it really quickly or verify it really quickly, I should say. Um, so let's look at one more, which kind of uses both of these. So we have sine minus tangent times cosine minus cotangent is equal to sine minus 1 times cosine minus 1. Um, you could kind of debate which side is more complicated. I would say the left-hand side because it just has more trig functions in it. So what I'm going to do, uh, there's not much you can do at this point. I'm just going to distribute and see what happens. So I'm going to take sine and multiply it by everything in cosine minus cotan. So I'm going to do sine times cosine. And then sine, so it's going to be minus sine times, uh, what I'm going to do here is cotangent uh, isn't really helping me, so I'm going to replace it using the ratio identity, so I'm going to replace that with cosine over sine. So I'm making a slight change there. And now I'm going to take negative tangent and distribute it, so it's going to be minus, but tangent's also not really helping me. Um, so I'm going to replace that with sine over cosine. So I have negative tangent times negative cotangent is going to be, um, oh no, I don't, I have negative tangent times cosine, I'm jumping ahead here. So I have negative, and then I replace tangent with sine over cosine times cosine. And now I have negative tangent times negative cotangent, so negative times negative is positive, and then I'm replacing tangent with sine over cosine and cotangent with cosine over sine. So I have this. That was harder to say than do. You probably did that like three minutes ago. And we have this. And then all of this is going to be equal to, I'm just going to kind of clean up some, some fraction things here. So sine cosine, and then sine over sine reduces, so just minus cosine here. And then we have cosine over cosine reduces, so just minus sine. And then this last thing, we have sine over sine and cosine over cosine. Or you can just remember that um, a trig function times its reciprocal function uh, is just going to give you 1 every time. Um, so plus 1. So here's something that, uh, it looks kind of weird, but you can actually factor by grouping here. So I'm going to group together um, these first two, and I can take a cosine out of that. So that's cosine, it leaves me with sine minus 1. And then uh, this second two, I can take a negative 1 out of, and I'll be left with sine minus 1. And then out of both of these, I can take sine minus 1, so I'm going to take sine minus 1 out. And it leaves me with cosine minus 1. And if you look at what we're supposed to prove this is equal to, it's exactly that. And so we did it. All right, so that's three examples of how um, either factoring or distributing can help you to verify identities. So I hope you found that helpful, and good luck.